Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. I want to continue on with my discussion that I've been having this week regarding dynamic symmetry and how you just can't use one tool to analyze all art. And what you see on my screen is a painting by Delacroix. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get some videos in before the holiday, before Christmas, in between Christmas and New Year's, because I'm going to take some time off. But I'm going to do an analysis from the book, The Painter's Secret Geometry. And this is very complex. I have a cup of coffee with me because <laughs> I might be here a while. But anyway, I'm not showing this to stress those out that are learning. This would be, if this was music, this would be a masterpiece by Beethoven or Mozart or whatever. So you can understand the level of this design and how complex it is, but what I'm going to demonstrate today is that there are many ways the artist can use the harmonic armature and you can't just lump everything into the dynamic symmetry arena when it comes to design. Delacroix is using a technique called rebatment which is overlapping two squares in a rectangle along with the harmonic armature. I'm going to demonstrate some of the things he's doing here but again I don't expect those that are watching this to go oh my god this is easy I understand it I don't expect that at all I'm simply illustrating the fact that you just simply can't root rect you can't use root rectangles to analyze everything so let me get started all right the first thing I'm going to do is drop the two squares like I said rebatment is overlapping squares in a rectangle so I'm going to put one on the right hand side here And then I'm going to create another one on the left hand side and I'm going to bring this to this point. So again you have overlapping squares but now what I can do is I'm going to drop diagonal lines inside of each one of these squares like this and this is what below. Let me make sure I have this one correct though. I want to make sure this is lined up correctly before I do this. There we go. All right, let me redraw that line. So I'm going to put a diagonal line here in the first square on the right hand side. And then I'm going to place a diagonal line from corner to corner in that square. But I can drop an additional diagonal line here on the left hand side square, right? And bring that one to there. So I have overlapping squares along with the squares diagonals. I'm going to eliminate now these squares at this point because I have my diagonal lines. But you have to remember that these diagonal lines are coming from overlap squares. So you can tell right here how this is playing out in this element here. But I'm going to now drop the harmonic armature on top of this. And again, like I said, I don't expect those watching this to fully understand what's going on. I simply want to demonstrate that I want to demonstrate the versatility of the harmonic armature, but also to demonstrate that there's just so many ways to design. You just can't throw everything into one camp. There's a vertical, I'm sorry, a horizontal line here. It's very faint, but it's coming from this horizontal line here. I'm going to drop my vertical in the center and start building the armature. You know, it's interesting. When I first started learning about the harmonic armature, my first impression was, geez, there's a lot of lines. There's 14 lines to this grid. So I assumed on the surface that it was more complicated than dynamic symmetry. But after repeating the same 14 lines, and this is the beauty of the harmonic armature, you're always dropping the same 14 lines. It becomes second nature to you very quick. You don't even think about it. And I'm not thinking about what I'm doing when I'm dropping these lines. I've done it so much. And that's why it's so user friendly because you're always using the same 14 lines to start a composition. And it doesn't matter what size rectangle you're using. In dynamic symmetry, you're using specific sized rectangles and then you're breaking them then breaking them down but if you get into this overlapping root rectangles it gets even more complex so 
on the surface, even though the harmonic armature has more lines, it's so much easier to use than dynamic symmetry when you're learning because it's a repetitive process. And like I said this morning, for those that know what the rule of thirds is, it's derived from this armature. It gives you a starting point. You just start with a few lines. All right, so I have the harmonic armature drawn out and I just want to point out a few things. I can drop a vertical right here where these two diagonal lines intersect, okay, right here. And as I said, with all these lectures, you can drop a horizontal and vertical line wherever two diagonal lines intersect. And Charles Boulot talks about that in the Painter of Secret Geometry when he's talking about the armature. A lot of times, what the artist ends up with doesn't resemble the initial armature. And that's something to really keep in mind. But I dropped a vertical here, right? I can then drop a diagonal line from this corner to this corner, and I'm getting the angle in the arm, the tricep, the forearm, and then the hand. See how that came out? Now there's a division here. I'm not going to bring this all the way over for now, but you have a division right here that's running along there. There is a division here. Right there. I believe. No, not there. Sorry. I can drop a horizontal line right here. And Bulow does demonstrate this in his book. There's a division here. But then I can drop that. I can drop a diagonal line from this corner to the corner of the horizontal line that I just dropped. And let me just eliminate. No, I'm not going to eliminate that because that's a, it's a division. I'm just thinking this through. But I know this looks incredibly complex. Like I said, it would. This is a Beethoven masterpiece if this were music. But if you take the time to look at how this armature is laid out, you will see what the artist is doing and how things are relate. For example, I could drop a... I believe I could drop another horizontal line right here, right? And it'll line up with this area in there. Things lock into place. And I'm not going to draw any more lines because I don't want to completely go crazy here. But you get the idea that as an artist, you're using the harmonic armature. And in this case, they're also the artist is also using rebatment. There is so much diversity to this armature that it's endless. And my point is today is that you can't just assume that because I match up a diagonal line, the artist is using root rectangles. That's not that's not what is happening here at all. But hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. And I haven't, you know, driven you nuts with this. But thanks for joining me. I appreciate it as always.